specific. We had at the time the largest crowd in Washington Grizzly standing history. The game was a classic with Montana scoring late for the win, but that was 2015. Today, far more is on the line. A trip to the national championship game. You're watching the FCS semifinals on ESPN. As good as it gets on this level, North Dakota State, they've won national titles in nine of the past 12 seasons. Montana trying to go back to the title game for the first time since 08-09. The winner advances to Frisco, Texas to take on the defending champs from South Dakota State, now winners of 28 straight. With that, hello and welcome to Missoula. I'm Lowell Galindo with Tioka Jackson. Don Davenport will join us from the sidelines. Listen to this place. It is nuts. This thing sold out in 15 minutes. I don't need to explain why the fans of the Bison or the Grizz. But for those that are newcomers to the FCS, Tioka, this is the equivalent of Bama, Michigan, playing in the national semifinals. Yeah, these are the bluest of the Blue Bloods playing FCS football. They've got touchdowns and scoring championships and all of that in their DNA. This is going to be a tremendous matchup. Last year, the Bison knocked the Grizz out of the playoffs. And this year, I truly believe the quarterback play will ultimately decide who gets knocked out this year. And you take a look at Cam Miller needs the nation in completion percentage. He's one of the most efficient passers that you're ever going to see. And with that strong arm, he can beat the defense all over the field. And on the other side, Clifton McDowell, the big sky newcomer of the year, does a tremendous job of running the football. He leads this team in passing yards, passing touchdowns, but also rushing touchdowns. He's a dual threat guy. And to add an extra layer of intrigue to this matchup, you have the future Bison head coach, Matt Entz. He told his team this week, that he is taking a job with Lincoln Riley at Southern Cal to coach linebackers. However, he will stay with the Bison through the playoff run. For more, here's Don Davenport with the head coach. Thank you, Lowell. Coach, 11 straight weeks without a bye, third straight playoff road game, and then you walk into this hostile environment. How is your team equipped to overcome all of that? Well, I, I, I think just embracing our process, going through our practice plan, trying to make it at an adverse condition as we can at practice enables us to play 11 weeks in a row but also three weeks on the on the road in front of unbelievable crowds you play one of the top defenses in the country what do you have to see from cam miller in this offense early yeah, we need to be efficient with our throws we got to be able to run the football stay ahead of the chains we we we, we got to stay out of third and long and because that's when the fans will impact the game big time good luck coach thank you Low. Fans are ready to impact the game right now. North Dakota State won the toss. They want the football. Underway, low liner into the end zone, and the Bison will take over at the 25-yard line. The North Dakota State offense, in the words of their offensive coordinator, Tyler Roll, they have their swagger back. Five straight wins, and in that stretch, averaging 45.6 points per game. Cam Miller. The starting quarterback. Miller to throw. High percentage. That is Eli Green with a quick first down for the Bison. Yeah, it's a great job of bringing Eli on a fly sweep motion. And this is sort of like a little triple option. Watch the fake to the back. And he has the ability, talking about Miller, to run it or throw it. But he's got a wide open green. And this guy's a big play ready to happen. 19 and a half yards of catch in the season. That was an easy one, but he can sling it. 74.5% number one in the FCS. Tamaric Williams gets the call. 
fighting his way for an eight-yard gain. You're going to see a lot of cute little formations from this Bison offense. That time they put their fullback, Hunter, Brozio, in the slot position, sort of a tight wing position to create a little bit of a mismatch on the corner of the defense. But make no mistake, they do a lot of different things pre-snap low, but they punch you in the mouth straight ahead more often than anybody else. Montana with the number four scoring defense in the FCS. Second and four. Empty for Miller. Looking left side, trying to stretch the field to Green. One-handed! He did it! Complete to Green. 38 yards and only one-handed needed by Eli Green. Well, he's a big play threat. Again, we talked on 19 and a half coming in. But in order to get down the field, it starts with protection. Watch the clean pocket now that Miller has to throw from. And that's just like stealing. That's like practice right there. But that's not like practice. Most guys can't make a catch like that under the rest. Roger Nelson with the carry. He's hit quickly and brought down by Ryder Meyer. Boy, I'm still stunned by that catch by Green, though. I mean, you talk about suction cups for hands. That's going to end up on the top ten somewhere. <laughs> yes, sir. And again, this is under great coverage. And he's being pushed and probably fouled, but that's just a tremendous effort. Great hands, and he's going to show it to you. I got suction cups, guys. Coach Roll was not lying when he said Eli Green is playing out of his mind. This is his crowd. Miller pulls it. Looking, and he's going to keep it. And four set of bounds. By Braxton Hill. It looked like he had TK Marshall coming back across the field. Tough angle, though. Yeah, it definitely would have been a tough angle. And, and one of the hallmarks of a good quarterback is he doesn't throw late across his body down the middle. So I like the idea of just getting out of bounds and taking what you can give. Now, this is a huge play here for this Grizz defense. Can they stop these guys in the red zone? Good on good here on third down. Clean pocket to the corner of the end zone. Green almost did it again. But what a stop by the Montana defense. Wow. And for a second there, I thought it was going to be two in a row. This time it's a slot fade. They line Eli Green up on the inside. Look at the route combination. And there's the corner route there by Green. He's open. Everything is perfect. The throw is just a little too strong and high. And even Green can't make the acrobatic catch. Griffin Crosa, the senior from Dublin, Ohio, now lining up for the field goal. You get the Bison on the board. Kick is up. Kick is good. And NDSU strikes first. Eli Green brought you the highlights. This place is already bonkers. It's going to be a classic. 3-0, Bison. Last Friday night against Furman, it was an all-time great performance by Junior Bergen. The All-American cemented his spot in Montana legend. Not just the kick return for 99 yards off the jump, but also a punt return for a touchdown in the fourth quarter to give Montana the lead. When you got a dynamic return guy like this, he's the true X factor. You can't account for and make up for two touchdowns in a playoff game. And I, you know, I'm thinking right now, Matt Ince told us, we, we worked on directional kicking. I mean, there's no need to be play hero or bravado. No, let's work on directional kicking because we don't want that guy, Junior Bergen, to ruin our game. The way Matt Ince summed it up, Junior Bergen won Montana the game last week. Tough to argue against that. And this one is going to go into the end zone. That's a win <laughs> yes. on the first kick, Absolutely. North Dakota State. Now we bring out Clifton McDowell, the senior quarterback from Spring, Texas. Interesting, because the Montana coaches told us he produced in the win against Furman, but didn't necessarily play well. Yeah, well, I mean, he hasn't been the most consistent thrower of the football, but what he has been is really mentally tough. He never goes into the tank, and he's made the plays in the moments that he had to make them to win the game. And again, this guy, dual threat-wise, is a really good football player. 
Montana offense that will go fast. And that's the give to Xavier Harris. This is how they love to use him. Get him in space. That's a fine pickup on first down for the Grizz. Here's a big point, though, for North Dakota State. We do not see Dylan Hendricks, first team Missouri Valley Conference defensive end on the field. He was questionable coming into this one, hurt his ribs in the win at South Dakota. So Lashaka Rokes is playing in his place. That is a big absence if we do not see Hendricks for the Bison. He's second on the team in sacks and TFLs. McDowell to throw. There's Bergen trying to shake free from Logan Cop. Seven yard gain and the first down. So, Low, I like to call these plays jumping jack plays for your quarterback. Just nice, simple out route to get him warmed up. And against off coverage, that's an easy throw. But it, what that does for McDowell is it gets them comfortable and gets them into this early playoff game. Running game was non-existent by the running backs in the win against Furman. Just 24 rushing yards by the backs. McDowell taking it through the air. That's just way off as he was looking for Keelan White, who had the game-winning touchdown in overtime. And that's a little bit of the inconsistency we talk about. He, he has the ability to run. We talked about that. Leads the team in rushing touchdowns. But his inability to get set up and throw better, those easy throws, he's just got to improve today. Will help Chris Walker, Liam Brown back on that offensive line. Coach Howe told me before the game they feel good, they're going to give it a go, and that's going to make a big difference for protection. Part of the reason why the offense was not clicking against a very good Furman defense, but there's Eli Gilman, Big Sky freshman of the year, the national freshman of the year on the FCS level but only two yards on 10 carries last week. Well, they got to get that going today. They cannot just drop back and throw the football every play. They got to stay ahead of the chains. Right now, they got third and reasonable because they were able to get a nice second down run from Gilman, a guy who averages 5.1. Bergen motions to the right side of the formation. McDowell short and dropped by Aaron Fonts. It was going to be tough to pick up a first down regardless. Fonts got to catch the football. Now he's turning to look to run and how he's going to make his move to get the first. But first things first, squeeze the ball. And this pass is accurate enough. A little bit behind him, but no, you got to catch that. See, I'm looking, he's looking away before he catches the football. All you young receivers, look it all the way in, secure it, then make your move. I got some thumpers on this Bison defense. We talked so much about Bergen and his return ability. Don't lose track of Jaden Price, who has the Bison school record for punt return touchdowns in a career. That's a fair catch. Now, we could see 15 to 20 different personnel packages in this game by the Bison. Yeah, it's the creativity by this Bison offense. They do a great job with all these different personnel packages. So 13 personnel, one running back, three tight ends. And then they will use the formation creativity within that personnel. You see them going to empty. Initially, that's a heavy run situation, but now you move the back to the slot, and that forces the defense to adjust. We'll come back to this after the play. Right here, we've got the Bison lining up in the old school I form. We've even seen them run the T formation. They do it all. Play action for Cam Miller. Working to the tight end. That's Joe Stuffle. And Stuffle picks up a first down. So now we're going to go back to these sets. So we showed you 13, now this is 23 personnel. Two backs, three tight ends, something you rarely see in this high-flying offensive era of college football. And then you're going to see 13 big. You never see this. This is three tight ends, but two of those guys are offensive linemen. That's seven total offensive linemen on the field. They're looking for an advantage on a perimeter, knocking people off the ball. Montana concerned more with those heavier packages. It is a smaller, faster Grizz defense. And here's a carry. Head down by Barika Panu. And the Bison staying ahead of the chains. We see the formations and just the shuffling in and out. And the hope by North Dakota State is with all these different personnel packages, it forces defenses to play as base as possible. 
This is an exotic Grizz defense. And we've got a carry. And a tackle made in traffic by Ryder Meyer and Kale Edwards. Here's Dawn. Guys, how difficult is it to learn all of those different personnel groupings? Well, Tamaric Williams transferred here from SMU. Told me it took him almost a year to feel completely comfortable in that offensive scheme that's so diverse. And this is a smart football player, too. Wants to be a coach, just got his master's degree this past week. He said it takes a while to really feel comfortable with all those different groupings. Big boys were on the field here for third and one. But we got a timeout called by the Bison. First timeout of the first half, North Dakota State. Extend to a media timeout. When we return to third and one for Matt Edge and his Bison. Third and one, that means it's Alex Gubner time for the Grizz. This week named first team All-American. He's not the biggest, but he is the most important player on this Grizzlies defense. Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year. Rarely do you see that from a nose tackle, but Ronnie Bradford said he makes our all-tough guy team. Super strong, heavy hands. Let's watch him inside. Both of these teams are great in this phase. Cole Payton at quarterback. Got a bunch of big bodies, tight ends, and fullbacks with him. Cam Miller, the quarterback, on the left side of the formation at receiver. Peyton will keep, run behind the fullback, and that's a first down. That is the epitome of how the Bison have built this dynasty. So look, I want you to watch the right side of this offensive line, and in particular, Jake Kobe, excuse me, the left side. There's a lot going on in terms of movement. But this quarterback is 230 pounds. He runs downhill like a fullback, and they will use him as such. About Hunter Brozio paving the way there. Get the big nasty at fullback, his props. Bison averaging nine yards on first down. Miller flushed. Gonna throw across the field in traffic, but he's got the catch. Zip code of Zach Mathis, all six foot seven to bring it in. Well, I mean, look, they, they tell you not to do this, but when you got a big time arm, sometimes you can get away with it. And Mathis is hurt. Officials, timeout. So first of all, you cannot allow Miller to get outside the pocket. He's not looking to run, folks. He's buying time, and then that arm talent to throw across the field, across your body, and get something on it gave Mr. Mathis an opportunity. He went up and got it. 6'7", 203-pound senior from Tampa, Florida. Obvious pain. Fortunately for the Bison, this is as deep and as skilled as they have been at the receiver position in this dynasty run. Peyton cutting up the middle. And Peyton, the freak show of an athlete, in the words of his offensive coordinator, picks up seven yards. Both these quarterbacks can run, but Peyton gives you something else with those 230 pounds. And so they shifted to unbalanced, Lowell, just before the snap of that ball. They moved an extra offensive lineman to the right. And again, 230 pounds. They said he's kind of like our Tim Tebow, which is, I mean, that's a pretty good thing to have as a backup quarterback, right? But they will batter your nose with the quarterback runs. Miller, all day to throw. Surveying, here comes Gubner, and forces the incompletion. Jackson Lee got a good read on it as well. But that's just tremendous coverage by the Grizz defense. I mean, he had everybody out in a route. You see empty formation, so you've got five out, and he can't find anyone. The offensive line is doing a tremendous job, but he just can't find anyone to throw the football to. Incomplete third and fourth. Start. Offense. 
Number 73, five yard penalty, third down. That is the 22nd false start by an opponent inside Washington Grizzly Stadium this year. A stat they take immense pride in. Well, they call this stadium the mecca of SCS football, and you see why right now, folks. False start. They get back to back. False start. Offense, number 63. Five yard penalty, remain third down. Well, this is why you fight so hard during the regular season to get a number two overall seed so you can be home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And this advantage is real. Miller to throw. He's looking at Marshall. Scrambling. Nothing there. Kale Edwards with the stop. Well, that's an old school coverage sack right there. This Grizz defense, especially this secondary, is doing a great job early on of staying with these receivers. And there's a lot of time to throw the football. It's not a great pass rush. Cam really had it all day, but he just couldn't find anyone. At the very end, the Grizz get the sack. Junior Bergen did not get a kick. Went to the end zone. Will he get a chance to return a punt here? High snap. Flag down. No play. It was blocked, but I don't know if this one's going to count. The flag came in before the snap. Both start. Kicking team, number 31. Five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. That's now 24 on the season. <laughs> we missed a false start, but there's the wall. What a great job of getting, I mean, he's engaged with someone and still gets the block. That's a tremendous effort there. Caden okay, Steindorf will try it again. Here's the pressure up the middle, just got it off. Bergen will let it bounce. And it keeps rolling for the Bison. To about 13-yard line. 45-yard punt. My bad. This Timeout. place Media. is alive. They're waiting for the Grizzlies offense to get going. 3-0 here in Missoula. football than what we have today in Missoula, Montana. A spot in the national championship game is on the line. Let's check in with Don Davenport on the sideline. This place is awesome. This place is nuts. I can't tell you, I feel like I can't do it justice to tell you how loud it is, but I can show you at least how tight these sidelines are. Look, this is the team coming into the bench area. This is where your Grizz fans are. That noise is loud. Now, I talked to Cam Miller earlier this week. He told me he felt like their last two games had prepared them crowd-wise, but this certainly affecting this offense so far in this game. And this is something that the Bison aren't used to, Don, as you know. They've been accustomed to being the national seed, playing inside the Fargo Dome. This is now three straight games on the road for the first time since 2006 for the Bison. Chance for Clifton McDowell to get the Grizz on the board. Backed up. Here comes the pressure up the middle. A little screen and dropped. It's now two straight passes that have been catchable, dropped by the Grizz. That one's on Eric Barger. It's clear that the Grizz have decided to come out throwing to loosen up this defense. You talked about their inability to run the football last week. This is a tough defense. They want to come out throwing the football and loosen up this front seven and eventually get to the run game because they're going to have to be able to get there and be balanced. This is an offense coordinated by former Montana quarterback Brent Pease based off tempo and explosive plays. 
Nick Osmo. The hard nosed tailback will get the carry. Slips one tackle. And is brought down by Cody Heisman. If there's one problem that has plagued the Bison throughout the course of the season, they have been inconsistent with their tackling in space. No question about it. And this is one of the tougher things to get to in practice because you got to keep guys healthy, keep guys off the ground. You got rules against hitting and all of that stuff. The tackling, the fundamentally of tackling shows up for every defense and it has for NDSU. Third and six for McDowell. Middle pressure. Complete the fonts at the sticks. That's going to be a first down for the Grizz. Well, Fonts is their speed guy, and he recognized man coverage. McDowell did. Watch him look away and then come back. And speak of comeback, that's a comeback route. Great job of Fonts of pressing up the field, putting his foot in the ground, coming back to his quarterback, creating separation. Great accurate throw. And there is the Grizz alum, Bobby Houck, in his 13th season, in his second stint as a head coach of the Grizz. McDowell stretching the field. Good hands by Bergen. 13 yards for the second team All-American. You said good hands, and, and boy, he has great hands. You know, Brett Pease talked about his ability to snag the football. And there you see it, hands catching. So important. Don't let that ball get to your body and bounce off the pass, especially in this cold. Reach up and snatch, attack the football. Back to Osmo. Osmo almost had some grain to work with, but he is brought down by Cole Wisniewski. Six-yard pickup. And so this is what the complimentary football does, the ability to throw the football, get this defense thinking about it, especially out of shotgun. Then you come back with the shotgun runs to set up this offense. Back to Osmo. A little shake, a little bake, taking on three Bison defenders to set up. A short yardage situation. Now they're going to say give him the first down. Wow. Favorable spot. Nick Osmo led the Grizz in rushing last season with 743 yards. He's been the number two guy behind the National Freshman of the Year, Eli Gilman. Xavier Harris checks in. The Grizz have three running backs that have led the team in rushing in each of the past three seasons. Cannot recall seeing that before. McDowell. Corralled and dropped. There's Javier Derrick with the pressure from the middle of the Bison defensive line. Well, that's a great job by Derrick just to keep coming. But if I'm McDowell, you got to go ahead and take off. I mean, you went empty. Don't hold it. If your first or second read's not there, go ahead and take off and use your legs. You're a tough tackle. And that is playing right into the hands of the Bison defense. They are so concerned about McDowell's running ability, more so probably the ad-lib scrambles than designed runs. Absolutely. He's a dynamic athlete at the position, and he's one of those guys that you can't account for because of his ability to make people miss in space. No Dylan Hendricks. First team all-conference for the Bison. Bergen in space. Oh, he hit his own man. And Nick Kubitz as well. Bergen taking everybody on. <laughs> well, that was a great job by Kubitz because he's right, running the football. You can't stop this tunnel screen without great hustle. C36 coming inside out, doesn't overrun it, and makes a really solid tackle. But that's a great job also by Jacasey Alexander setting the edge. Third and 12. See what Jason Petrino dials up for his Bison defense. Pressure. Good block by Osmo. McDowell ad limbing, throwing to White. He brings it in. What a catch. There is a flag down. But as it stands, a 30 yard pickup for Keelan White. Well, that's pass interference, no doubt. He was held twice talking about White, and he fought through all of that to make a circus catch going up and get it. That's a great job. Take your pick, Eli Green or Keelan White <laughs> with top 10 catches in the early going. I'll take either one of them. You can win with both of these guys. They talked about Keelan White's hands and his intelligent route running. Holding defense, number 10. That penalty is declined, result of the play, first down. That goes against Marcus Shepard. 
transfer from Bowling Green. So I mentioned his intelligence, but this is not about intelligence. This is about fighting through a defender who's just trying to hold on to you. Great job of buying time, but McDowell tells you oh. got to go deep, and he goes and gets it. Nice job. McDowell, so comfortable in the pocket as Schaefer and Barker move to the right side. Osmo the carry. And Osmo tackled by Kubitz. So the Grizz show their version of 12 personnel. Moving their tight ends pre-snap. A little bit of the Bison's own medicine thrown at this defense. And we're winding down the first quarter of a game with the intensity that is living up to all the hype. We'll go to the second quarter with North Dakota State holding a 3 nothing lead over Montana. First matchup with these two teams in Missoula since 2015. North Dakota State trying to prove they ain't done yet and the dynasty is still, in fact, alive. Grizz trying to get back to the title game for the first time. It's going back to back in 08, 09. We're hitting here in Missoula. Bison with the three nothing lead going into the second quarter. Here's Don Davenport and Matt Entz. One quarter in the books here in Missoula. Coach Entz, how would you assess your team's ability to handle this environment well, that quarter? We haven't done very good yet. I mean, we had three false starts, um, but I think we'll settle down here a little bit. Uh, we just got to continue to just do what we've been doing in practice. Uh, we got to play a little better on third down this drive, of course. Thank you, Coach. You bet. And you can hear the chance of USC in the background as Osmo stays up, hits the sideline for the first down. Sometimes it doesn't really matter what you run the 40 in and how quick you are. It's about your toughness and your drive and ability to break tackles. And obviously, if you play for the Grizz as a receiver, you better block because they're going to run the football right at you. Back injuries, shoulder injuries, everything in between for Osmo in his career, but he has kept on churning and pounding out yards. That is Montana tough right there. There's the great John Robinson, the ex-USC head coach. Speaking of USC, John Robinson talked about the toughness of a program is found in the guy who runs the football. And Osmo is that for this Grizz offense. Has an extra year of eligibility, but announced before the start of the season, he was gonna hang it up. Too many injuries to his body. Wants the opportunity to have a healthy life after football, play with his children when he can start a family. There's still some football left. McDowell, tough to the 10. He's gonna set up a third. And about six. That's the first design run we've seen from McDowell, and this is a big part of what the Grizz do. You see there, this is just a straight read option. Pulls it out of the belly. That's really a good job by the entire NDSU defense, particularly. Take a look at number 54 getting out of the read and coming out and making a play. That's Jake Kavna. Nice job of hustling to the football. Cabo. Playing the best football of his career. Third and seven, Gilman's the running back. McDowell, backside pressure, he gets out of it. That's the athleticism on display. Still cooking, McDowell inside the five, give him the first down. Feel that, Tayoka. Well, I'm trying to figure out if he has eyes in the back of his head. And you talked about feeling it. All the big time quarterbacks have a feel. And then look at the big lineman downfield, Chris Walker, looking for work and springing his quarterbacks for extra yardage. That's a big time play. T formation, giving the Bison some of their own medicine. The carry stood up. as Gilman could not find any room to work with. You saw Chris Walker in the previous play going downfield to get an extra bucket. They, they weren't even sure that Walker was going to play today. And, and so there are guys out there nicked up 
hurt, showing up, and ready to play for both of these football teams. McDowell, quick pitch to Gilman. He's got the corner. He's got the end zone. Grins on the board. Just a quick pitch to the outside. And Gilman shows he has some speed, just a freshman. But he's no ordinary freshman, folks. He's the Jerry Rice winner for the best freshman in FCS football. And you know he needed that. He was stymied last week against Furman. Ten carries, two yards. But he finds the end zone there for the 11th time this season. And the Grizz have taken the lead. The best scene in sports on this Saturday. It's electric here in Missoula. Grizz with the lead, 7-3. to NCAA FCS championship coverage continues. With the national championship game on January 7th at 2 o'clock Eastern on ABC. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Winner here advances to take on South Dakota State. You're looking at the offensive coordinator for the Bison. That is Tyler Roll. He is a Fargo legend. High school standout back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rusher for the Bison before joining this coaching staff, becoming the offensive coordinator. He's trying to not only win this football game, he is trying to win the head coaching job for the Bison as well. He's the guy the players want. Why are we talking about this? Well, earlier this week, Matt Ince announced to his team that he was joining Lincoln Riley's staff at USC to be the linebackers coach. Nothing new for the Bison. They've seamlessly made the transition from Greg Bowl to Chris Kleiman to Matt Entz. Who has next in Fargo? Bison back on offense. Tough carry is to Merrick Williams. Don. Lowell, you were talking about Ince taking that job. He called the team meeting in the afternoon to let his team know because he wanted to make sure that they heard it from him. And the players I talked to said they appreciated that. He ripped the Band-Aid off. He didn't want to be a distraction. And the overall feel from that team, they understood. They're happy for him. And they want to finish this season off and send him out on top. I form here. Pitch to Tameric Williams. Right side. And brought down by Nash Fouch. What do you make of the timing? Tried to keep it under wraps as long as he could, but at some point he realized the team was going to find out. Yeah, I mean, listen, you, you'd rather have your team find out from you rather than find out on Twitter, right? Because he's fought with these kids. He's helped raise these kids. He's an integral part, obviously, of this program's history. So I like his ability to go in and look them all in the eye and say, this is what's going down. I am not going to lie to you. I'm going to keep it real. You heard it right from me. Two national titles as well. Second and three. First down, yardage. And that is Parika Pinu. Breakout year for him, only 52 yards last season. He's closing in on 500 for the year. Well, we talk about skill position players like quarterbacks getting warmed up, getting going in the game and the offense. Well, offensive line, they get warmed up too. And this running game is starting to heat up because this offensive line is beginning to dominate this line of scrimmage. They have a size advantage, and right now they're using it. Pinu up the gut, but stood up and slammed. Tyler Flink with the stop, the Missoula native. As soon as I talk about this offensive line, the Grizz step up and say, no, no, it doesn't really matter. We're going to start playing some run defense, and that's a great job of hitting your fits. Tyler Flink comes in and lays the wood and runs his feet. 
Again, young player. See how he ran his feet on contact? That's how you make tackles when a guy goes down. From special teams player of the year, a season ago for the Grizz to a defensive standout. Get loud. Miller to throw. Miller's got a man on the sideline. First down, but a flag is down as Eli Green hold it in. But the Grizz decides to bring some late pressure and against man coverage. If you don't get there, you're vulnerable deep. That's a great job of Miller finding the open guy and hitting him with an accurate throw. But as you said, there is a flag down. We'll see. Pass interference. Offense, number three, 15-yard penalty. May second down. Wow, so that's going against Raja Nelson. Move it back. So let's see what happened. Is this a rub route or quote unquote a pick play? And it is. And listen, I'm going to be honest with you, Lowell, that, that usually doesn't get called. It has to usually be more egregious. Will you see Nelson coming in on an in route and sort of blocking the defender? I thought he did a really good job of acting. And I'm surprised that the yellow laundry hit the field. And I'm a defensive guy saying that. So, <laughs> boy, it, that, that was questionable to me. Second and 26. Nelson with the carry. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Henry Noose, how about this? He tore his peck on the second day of practice, made his season debut last week against Furman, came up with a sack, and then in his second game of the year, <laughs> makes another stop at the line. Yeah, Hank says, I can make TFL. Look at him get off the block, number 96, and go get the football. It's one thing to get blocked, but you don't stay blocked. You shed and go get the ball carry. A nice job with number 96. Hank Noose. Third in Kalispell for the Bison. <laughs> Sideline out of bounds. No shot there. As Jake Lippy was well out of bounds for the pass even went his way. So you saw really good coverage. That zone defense in the back half. There's going to be some open spots in the zone, but it forces perfection, and rarely can the offense be perfect in situations like that. And as you saw, that one foot came down, but it was out of bounds. Running out of real estate here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Another opportunity for Junior Bergen. Steindorf had one blocked that was negated by a false start. If I'm Steindorf, I'm directional kicking. I'm trying to make Bergen run for this catch. Pressure from the middle. Prior to the snap, delay of game. Kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. With every penalty, this fan base gets louder and louder. <laughs> they they smell blood in the water. So here's the question, though. With that penalty, does that change the strategy from the Grizz? Do you now go return with this dynamic return man, or do you continue to be aggressive and go for the block? I'm going for return here. Could have jumped off sides here. I don't see a flag. Low punt. Bergen fields it off a hop and takes it out at the 28-yard line. Montana. With the Rock in their house, trying to add to the four-point lead. Media. And we're, we're back in Washington Grizzly Stadium. Let's take a look at how the Grizz was able to get this 7-3 lead. It started off with the throwing. They were able to throw the football early and set up this running game. And what a great job of Osmo running tough through tackles. And then Eli Gilman, the freshman, Finishing it off on pay Dirk and giving these guys in Washington Grizzly Stadium what they came to see. Grizz went 4-4 four four on third down on that drive. With the highlight catch made by Keelan White on a third and forever. So the Grizz, it was tough sledding last week against Furman. Just one offensive touchdown in regulation. Trying to add, here's Bergen. Bergen slips one tackle. He's up on the sideline. The spin close to the 50. 
Junior Bergen will not be denied 21 yards. Well, look, Junior Bergen is a flat-out lethal weapon, and they get him the football in a variety of ways, and as soon as he gets this ball on the run, he becomes the punt returner that he is. And look at his ability to have contact balance and work the sidelines for extra yards. Just a terrific athlete with all kinds of big-time plays. This tackle's again problematic for the Bison. Back to Bergen on the quick swing pass. He's still fighting his way forward. Let's get everybody involved. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So he showed his dynamic ability in space. And this is just about toughness because there are defenders there. And he refuses to go down. And we're talking about a guy that played running back as a freshman here. Had nearly 500 yards. He can lower the shoulder, That's man. exactly right. But that ability to be a running back, a runner when he gets his balls in the hands, I mean, that, that is just terrific. McDowell. Eludes the rush again. The dump down to Harris. Harris to the open field and to the 20. McDowell had time, had patience, and eventually found his man, Xavier Harris, for 24. This is why everyone's looking for the athletic quarterback, not just in the run game, but the ability to extend the play. Defenses get stressed and eventually break down when a quarterback can elude the defenders with his eyes downfield. Talking about a Montana team that has won nine in a row. The turnaround was after the loss against Northern Arizona. They decided to go with Clifton McDowell at quarterback exclusively. It's paying off. Here he is, weaving, dashing, leaping, and inside the five-yard line. He is a different dude at quarterback, 16 yards. And you got to consider, he has not played a lot of college football before this year. And it's those... Wide splits of these Grizz offensive linemen creating angles, blocking angles, and we talked about how dynamic a player he is. This quarterback run game is lethal for these guys. I was looking for it. They did a great job of throwing the football early, loosening up this front seven, and man, they're smacking them in the mouth. Started to go with those wide splits between the offensive linemen after the loss to Northern Arizona. Perfect marriage with the approach and the engineer at quarterback. Nowhere to go there. Gilman goes backwards as most start with the TFL. And the crowd's getting on him, but that's okay. And that's exactly what the doctor ordered. Great job of most start getting in the backfield right away. And he, hey, they didn't block him, right? So listen, if you don't block the guy, he should make the play. But listen, we've seen a lot of guys miss layups in basketball. He didn't miss the tackle, though. Nice job of getting him wrapped up and getting him on the ground. Wanted to share this moment with his twin brother, Will. However, Will out for the season with an Achilles injury. It was Eli that had the injury problems last season. Kind of cool when they don't block you, Lord. Very nice. Spoken like a true defensive lineman <laughs> then. McDowell left side. Just falls down. They've got into it with Eric Barker's feet. And we're pushing and we're shoving. There's a national championship on the line. Two programs that don't think highly of each other. And frustration there for McDowell. And this drive was sizzling until unblocked defender and a trip. Beautiful day. The clouds have burned off. And at the foot of Mount Sentinel, the Grizz will try to convert on third and goal. Look out for the quarterback run game. Inside pressure again. McDowell, he's quicker. He's not going to elude this nowhere. Except Derrick's mitts. Javier Derrick with his second big play. That's a loss of 18 yards. Not the greatest decision right there by McDowell. I mean, this is not high school football. You're not going to be able to double back and outrun defenders. Great job here of extending. Now just throw it out of bounds, right? You're going to turn around and try to double back. Yeah, there's no chance there. Great job of just rushing by Javier Derrick. And so what that does is it takes you out of Nico Ramos's range. So Grant Glasgow, who's got the longer range, now comes in to attempt the field goal. 46 yards. And there's movement on the Grizz. Nothing was called. The snap, the kick, 
Glasgow. Nails. Watch a backup kicker coming in and change the scoreboard. That's a bailout right there. <laughs> right. Wow. Grant Glasgow making the most of his opportunity. The Grizz went backwards. It set up the long range expert. He got it to go. Give him three. A North Dakota State offense that has been simply rolling to the tune of more than 45 points per game in their five game winning streak. Now only has a field goal to show for it. Lowell Galindo here with Tioka Jackson and Don Davenport. Tioka, how did the Bison get going offensively? Well, first thing they got to stop the penalties. Right now it's 5-0 in a penalty situation, and they're only 25% on third down. And this is one of the best third down offenses in America. How do you be better on third down? You be more efficient on first and second down to stay ahead of the chains so you can be better on third down. Eli Green found himself open on the opening drive of the game for the Bison. He was overthrown by Cam Miller. That was a big miss. Here's Nelson, and it will be Bison football on the 25-yard line. Cam Miller, national leader in completion percentage coming into this game at 74.5%. He's 4-7 in this game. Keep in mind what the Grizz have done against opposing quarterbacks over the last six games, holding opposing quarterbacks to 41.6 completion percentage. And that's, that's killing quarterbacks right there. And they said this guy here, Miller, is the best quarterback they faced all season. So right now, the Grizz are holding up real nice. Say there's a little Carson Wentz in this game. Mm -hmm. High praise for one of the best to ever do it for the Bison. A lot of maroon jerseys in quickly. Stuff to Merrick Williams, including Alex Kubner. So let's talk about how tough this run defense has been. To Mark Williams is averaging 6.9 a carry. That's not 6.9, folks. Nope. That's three yards. And we talked about being better on first and second down so you can stay ahead of the chains. That's not that either. So it's the early down aggression of this defense of the Grizz that's keeping this offense under wraps. Cole Payton now checks in. He's got TK Marshall with him. Green in motion. Oh, Payton hit by Governor. Governor swallowed him whole. That's why he is the conference defensive player of the year, folks. The penetration kills any type of run game. And I don't care if it's the quarterback run game. Look at him get upfield, and that's a nice assist from Levi Janicaro as well. Multiple hats to the ball. They hang their hat in Grizz country on getting everybody to the football. Third and 12 for Cam Miller, pressured to Eli Green for the first down. What a response. After Peyton was dropped, Miller checks back in and connects to Eli Green for the first down. Well, this Cam Miller is a cool customer. As you said, the rush was coming. He got his drop, back foot down, and threw an accurate pass. Eli Green continues to impress. And every time Miller makes a change at the line, he is egging on this crowd. They get louder and louder. Miller unfazed in the breakup by Trevin Gradney. First team, big sky corner. Gradney, yeah, excuse me. Gradney came back and was physical at the, at the catch point. You got to understand as a defensive back, it's the time of truth when that ball hits the hand. The play is not over until the ball's on the ground. That's a great job of coming in and batting that thing down. Not a PBU like that last Friday night to seal the win in OT against Furman. His Montana defense is legit. Maybe undersized, but they can run. And they are nasty. Miller all day, throws high, Green is there. First down yardage once again. This is the Cam Miller Eli Green show. So Ronnie Bradford decides to go with a three-man rush. Look at the time now for Miller. 
you better be careful giving him that much time in the pocket. He will carve you up like a turkey. I like the three, or excuse me, the four and five man pressures against Miller. 45 seconds left before half. Miller finding his rhythm. Miller, what a spin. But second effort by the Grizzlies. Defense drops him for the sack. And a loss of five yards. See, that's that five-man pressure that I was talking about. Three won't cut it. Hayden Harris with the drop. Had another sack to his total. Second. Coming close to the end of the first half. Trip to the national championship on the line in Missoula. Now we look forward to that. This scene, unreal. Miller to throw. He's got all day looking for Green on the sideline. Green made a nice adjustment. But Trey Young Cotton was there. You talked about the adjustment. It was great. But it looked like to me, Trey John reached that right hand back and knocked that ball out. Look at that. <laughs> now, whether he made know, contact, but, but hey, listen, that hand will throw off the concentration, but you know, that ball hits your belly. That's not a that's not a real good look for the uh for the, Between the numbers, <laughs> bring that in, right? Here we go, third and fifteen. Miller to Nelson. Oh. Nelson hit hard by Ronald Jackson. All right, decision time here on a fourth and short. I think you go in this situation. Just the real wild. You want to see the wheel route against man coverage. This time it's against zone, so there's, a, there's going to be a deeper defender to come up and making a hit. That's a great job of concentrating, getting your feet down, though, by Nelson. Fourth and two with 24 seconds left. Bison with one timeout remaining. And that's big people coming in the game. This is where they hang their hat on the A gap power mindset. Cole Payton is at running back. Miller motions out. It looks like we got a timeout by the Grizz. That's exactly what we have. First charge timeout of the half, Montana, 30 seconds. To talk about this Tyler Roll offense, they'll do that. We talked about all the personnel packages. We will see them line up with two quarterbacks in at the same time. Yeah, there's so much that you have to prepare for when you're playing against this offense. They stress you not only with just their regular run plays and their pass plays and all of that stuff and the, and the guys who are talented like Miller and all that, but it's also these formation and shifts that really make it hard on you. And let's take a look at these plays that just show you a little bit of what we're talking about, about how they use not only just the personnel packages, but also the shifts and plays that they run out of it. Here's your, a basic power play that's not so basic because they line up their tight end in the slot. They bring him across. Now watch him go across the formation and kick out the end man. That's going to influence the linebackers to go outside, but that ball's hitting down the middle inside. A lot of key breakers in this offense. Peyton is out of the game. It's just Cam Miller and Tamaric Williams at tailback. The pitch to Green. Green is going to have the edge. Beats a defender, a stiff arm inside the 20. That's how you roll on fourth and two. Wow. And you see why all the buzz is about Tyler Roll staying right here to take over for Matt Entz. This offense is imaginative and effective. 15 seconds, Miller will clock it with 13 seconds, now down to 12 on the game clock. Well, Tyler Roll tried to warn us when he said Eli Green is playing out of his mind. I love the creativity here. Oh, yes. So initially, it's about the ball handling. I thought that ball was held, was handed off inside on the inside zone. He pulls it out, and now it's about the accurate pitch under pressure. How many times have we seen pitches like this be off? Great job of getting it up. Hands catch. Nice job of looting the defender gets the first down. But now 
North Dakota State heading towards the north end zone crazies. Miller to the end zone. The green overshoots him. Bison, we're looking for a flag. They do not get it. Well, Gradney was in great position, and they should not have gotten a flag. Yeah, two guys jostling for position, and the defender has just as much right to that space as the receiver. And there's two guys with their hands on each other, competing. Nice job of not throwing the officials. Great job. Not Don't panic, Mr. Official. Seven seconds left. Third and ten. One timeout for the Bison. Protection is key in this situation. You can't give up a sack. And another timeout. Bobby Houck wants to talk it over with Second the Grizz defense. Second charge time out of the half. Montana, 30 seconds. I think Bobby recognizes the moment. There are moments in games, in college football games, there's probably about seven moments throughout the game that's going to ultimately decide who wins or loses. This is one of those moments. One, position, one possession ball game. The team is inside the red zone. You can't give up a touchdown here going into the half. So how gets it? He wants to make sure everybody's on the same page. And at the very least, they force a field goal opportunity. Feels a little bit like the Bison's game against Montana State. We'll detail that in a moment. Also want to tell you about coming up on ESPN, quadruple header with Cal and Texas Tech and the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl. You can always watch it on ESPN+. Plus. With that game against Montana State on the road, the Bison struggled. They were sluggish offensively in the first half. They got it going and ended up winning in overtime. Pressure. Miller throwing on the run. Closest guy was Raja Nelson. That's the right play. And we talked about you can't take a sack in this situation and force a really tough field goal. I like how he got out of the pocket, got as much as he could out of the play, and throw it away. That is an enormous stop by the Grizz defense. There's Krosa from 35. He's already connected from 30. Who gets... Who gets... Krosa... And that is pure. So North Dakota State will send it to the half with another field goal. National championship appearance on the line between two of the Blue Bloods on the FCS level. Montana with the lead over North Dakota State, and the Grizz will get the football to start the second half. To the studio now with Matt Barry. Great one culminating here in Missoula, Montana. The Grizz with a 10-6 lead over North Dakota State. What's on the line? How about a spot in the FCS championship game? With Tayoka Jackson, I'm Lowell Glendo. Welcome back to Missoula. Hey, you got to give the Grizz defense some credit here. They hold North Dakota State without a first-half touchdown for the first time since week number four when the Bison lost to South Dakota. In fact, the Bison are 0-3 this season when they score fewer than 30 points. What are the Grizz doing defensively? Well, they're not giving up any big plays, and that was a key and an emphasis for this, Gri this Grizz entire staff. We cannot give up big plays both on the ground or in the air. And so what you're seeing is a bend, but don't break it. They're not even bending very much. A lot of guys getting off blocks in this run game. The pass rush has been good enough, but what has been amazing is this secondary coverage are now allowing anything behind them. And then offensively, they were able to throw the football early, which I thought was a really smart wrinkle, and they were able to get the running game going. Listen, when your defense is playing lights out, it doesn't take a lot of scores to stay ahead on that scoreboard. Third downs have been very friendly to the Montana offense. They went four for four on their lone touchdown drive. They got the 10 to six lead. Eli Green has been a one-man show for the Bison got four catches, 89 yards. Something to point out, though, as you look at the stats, second half concerns when it comes to the Bison and their health, their availability. Last season when these teams played, it was the Grizz that were banged up. Zach Mathis has not returned to the game since it looked like he hurt his shoulder very early in this game, and we have not seen Dylan Hendricks, the outstanding defensive end for the Bison. So the Grizz will start with the football. They'll bring it out on the 25-yard line. Let's check in with Dawn. 
Hey guys, the message from Montana head coach Bobby Houck at the half to his team was we got to finish drives offensively this half to have a chance. He felt that they moved the football well in that first half, but they just didn't finish. Weren't efficient at finding the end zone. As for North Dakota State, the main message at the break, penalties. They have got to be better. He told us this week that when they struggle defensively, it's because they're not tackling well, and that's exactly what he saw in the first half. Good in the red zone, but they've got to tackle better this half. This crowd has been electric. We see multiple false start penalties in the first half on North Dakota State. You're probably looking at the stands right now saying, why did everybody leave? Well, they're not gone. They just went to the parking lot. Again, they got refueled, right. and then they'll make their way back inside Washington Grizzly Stadium because this second half of football, this is what they've been waiting for since Bobby Houck took back control of this program. When this sun goes down, this excitement goes up in this stadium. Trip to the national championship game to take on South Dakota State is on the line. Here's Clifton McDowell. He'll swing it out to the freshman Gilman. Gilman nearly got through the tackle by Oscar Benson. And it's going to set up a third and manageable. Gilman showing his versatility. We talked about him being the Rice winner. He's the Big Sky Freshman of the Year. Second team all Big Sky. He's got a tremendous future because he can run it and catch it. And when he does get the ball in his hands, the first guy usually doesn't tackle him. This is a takeaway defense. The Bison half. One of the best in getting that football and all the FCS. They need one of those turnovers to get back in this one. Tipped at the line, give credit there to Mostart, who's had a very active day so far. So that's defensive line 101. You're trying to rush the passer, but when you can't get the, get your hands up in the throwing lanes, good things will happen. A three and out for the Montana offense. North Dakota State trying to go to the championship game for the 11th time in program history. Montana trying for appearance number eight. Now, this is a annual tradition for the Bison to go. But for the Grizz, it would be the first time since they went back-to-back -back years in 08 and 09, coming up short in both of those seasons. Travis Benham on the punt. Wow. Dicey, he goes down, and there is a flag. And Benham is going to play this up for everything it's worth. And he's done his job. Look at the smile <laughs> and the Academy Award. Oh, my goodness gracious. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense, number 52, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that's going to go against Nathaniel Staling. Look at the smiles, though, from Travis Benham. you got to be an actor sometimes. Let's see how good of an actor he is. Oh, look, he got hit. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I like him selling it at the end, but he didn't need to do anything. That is a foul big time. But I like how he yeah, put a little extra the, the slow on. roll, right. staying what? down. But the best is when he looks up and smiles <laughs> like, did I get the flag? I got did it. I do it? Gotcha. McDowell backpedaling. This is where it's problematic. Oh, dangerous play. Incomplete to Aaron Fonts. It was a similar situation when Montana was driving in the first half. They were in the red zone, but McDowell tried to do too much. Yeah, you got to be careful in this situation. I understand he's trying to get as much as he can out of it, and he's done a great job of buying time. But you got to be smart, and that is very dangerous. Lucky that ball ended up on the ground. What's he seeing that's preventing him from just taking off? Well, I don't, I think that time they brought heat. And so he didn't see any obvious running lanes there. That's another part of his game that he hasn't shown us a lot of today, running after dropping back from passing. Screen, no oh. one is there. And that was almost jumped by Wisniewski. He was thinking about his ninth interception of the season. Living dangerously right now are the Grizz. Well, they're lucky again. As you said, Wisniewski leads the country in interceptions, and that would have been one of the easier ones he's gotten all year. It was thrown right to him. There was no back. Obviously, he got held up in the wash. You are a Montana fan. These are some very anxious moments, even though we're just underway here in the second half. 
Eisen showing heavy pressure. Top of the screen. They back off. McDowell has time, throwing back to the right side. Gilman met in a hurry by Sam Young. That's just outstanding defense. You show pressure, and then you pull out, trying to fool the quarterback, McDowell, thinking he's got man coverage when he doesn't. He doesn't panic, though. He doesn't find his receiver, looks for his outlet, and that's Young coming up and making a short tackle in space. This is how you get off the field on third down. So it's basically two three and outs with the roughing call sandwiched yeah. in between. That is a great start for the Bison defense. Benham, great to see he's recovered from his injuries from that roughing. <laughs> it gets this one away, and a fair catch is called for inside the 10-yard line by Jaden Price. Bison backed up after the 45-yard punt. We'll try to get the offense cranked up next. So much deserved talk about the Bison championship pedigree. How about that of Montana? National title number one back in 1995, taking down Marshall 22 to 20 as Don Reed picks up the first national championship in program history. 95, that's my era. Joe Glenn would follow in 2001. And Bobby Houck will try to add a number to that wall here inside Washington Grizzly Stadium. Bison will go to the ground, and there's a hardy pickup on first down by Tameric Williams. That's the first down efficiency that we haven't seen from this offense. They have not done well at all on third down. They've only been 28%, and this is an offense that's over 50%. It's because first and second down hasn't been kind. Look at the vision right here. Nice job of two foot cutting where the hole is. Run the daylight, don't run the dark darkness. I like it. I four. Williams. Play action fake. And that's going to be low to Braylon Henderson. First time Henderson seen action. Pressure. This is about the pressure not allowing Cam Miller to be comfortable. And he couldn't throw an accurate ball because he had Hayden Harris in his face. The route was there. The throw was bad because of the pressure. Time for the north end zone crazies to get going. Movement on the right side of North Dakota State. Both start. Offense, number 46, five yard penalty, remains third down. So, so many times it's the student section that makes places special. The north end zone, though, are all the old school Grizz fans that have been longtime season ticket holders. They live and breathe Grizz football. That's now five false starts on the Bison. Credit that to the atmosphere. And look at the change in the formation. It was an obvious run play before here. Got to throw the football, I believe. Miller will pressure. He is absolutely pancaked. Braxton Hill got all of them. Whoa. The third team All-American, Braxton Hill, had the target set and let it fly. Well, this is your leading tackler, and he's normally a prototypical Mike linebacker, but he comes off the edge with ferocity and lays the wood to Cam Miller, and once again, Cannot throw to an open man because the pressure forced the incompletion. After football, Hill's going to teach third or fourth grade. <laughs> Plays <laughs> like that will make sure those kids stay in line. <laughs> Junior Bergen time. Fair catch signaled at around the 50-yard line. The first three and out by the Bison today. Let's catch up with Dawn. You know the saying, guys, you can't manufacture experience. How about that Montana defense? And these linebackers, Levi Janicaro, Tyler Flink, Braxton Hill, they've been together for six 
years. Check out their pick from their first ever spring together, baby faces. They've all lived together for five of those six years, and that certainly helps them with communication on the field. They know what the other's thinking. Levi told me they watch ball together, they critique each other. That is uh, one of the big reasons this defense is so successful. They've got that experience and they have that chemistry there in the middle. Flink says that growing up with Janet Carroll, They've always been together. In fact, they have not been away from each other for more than a week at a time over the past 11 years. What does that do when you have that connectivity? Well, you fight for each other. And when things get tough and you're in pain and sore, you don't give up, not just for yourself, but for the man next to you. And everybody in pain, sore at this time of year. Clifton McDowell falling forward. You know who's not in pain is, is Dawn. You know she's rocking a heated vest right now? <laughs> That's not cheating. That's that's allowed. That was smart. No, you know what? That is that's smart. That's right. This I'm a Southern girl. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm not used to this Montana weather. Can't hide money though. I mean, it ain't, it ain't expensive. I guarantee you, you can't hide money. I love it, dog. <laughs> Third and six for the Grizz. McDowell is flushed. Eyes up. This is going to be short of the sticks as it completes it to Keelan White. Offense for the moment staying out. It's going to be a fourth and two. And here we go. We saw the Bison stay out at the same spot of the field in the first half. This is one of these moments we talked about, Law, and I like the decision. This is very aggressive. This area of the field, I like the idea of going for it. You just need two. But here's an opportunity now for this Bison defense to set up their offense in very good field position. ESPN analytics say go for it on fourth and two or less. First charge timeout of the second half, North Dakota State. Bison will take the timeout, talk it over as Montana will line up, go for it on fourth this and two. Championship game on the line. Fourth and two for the Montana offense after the timeout. Clifton McDowell. With an empty formation. Quarterback run game in this situation. Pressure. McDowell will throw. Miscommunication with Junior Bergen. That one never had a chance. What happened there? Again, the pressure. It sped McDowell up. Could not develop the route hold it long enough to get it developed and had to let that ball go before he wanted to. No chance for a completion there. You said it, there's a handful of plays in every game that are ultimately the difference. Will that be the spark that the Bison need to get going? The offense has only produced two field goals in what could be the final game for Matt Entz as the head coach of North Dakota State. He's on to USC where he will coach linebackers. He will stay with the Bison through this playoff run. Penu, good second effort to the 50. I think it's really important that they get this run game going. This is so integral to what they do. And look at the line of scrimmage getting moved. And then Penu, it's not always gonna be perfect. You've gotta have the desire to have contact balance and run through tackles. Nice job there. Just shy of the 50. Raja Nelson, the slash receiver, running back. Now to Miller's left. Little razzle dazzle, Nelson will keep. Into the open field to the sideline, inside the 40 for Raja Nelson. That's the Swiss Army knife <laughs> of this Bison offense. Again, the ball handling is so terrific. It continues to deceive my eyes, so you know what's going on in the field. I saw multiple defenders going with the reverse man, and that's why you have all this room to run from a dynamic athlete like Nelson. There's the reverse. Look at the defender stopping, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, that ball's going front side. TK Marshall, the tailback. Marshall with the carry. Patience, and then hits it. The offensive line for North Dakota State, if you talk to their coaches, they will tell you that group has been instrumental in the turnaround. No question, the way they play offense, everything is predicated on the offensive line dominating the line of scrimmage. Let's just look at what you just saw there. First you run the fake, the sweep, the sweep and 
all the exotics, then you come right back with three tight ends and you pound the defense right in the mouth. So all that matters, though, you can do whatever you want if the five guys wearing those high jersey numbers can knock people off the ball. Miller to throw. Miller has a man to the tight end. It's Brozio, and he drops it. Wow. It was there for Hunter Brozio. One of the few offenses in college football that still uses the fullback. This time they line him up in the tight end position, and bro, Brozio, this is all you, baby. Got to make that catch. Third and six. Wow. I think this is four down territory. If they can be at least three or more on this third down. Marshall with the carry. First down, Bison. So much of what this Bison offense does is straight down the middle. A lot of offenses love to run on the perimeter, not these guys. Take a look at where this ball hits, right up inside. They bring the tight end across the formation to kick out the end man, and that ball's hitting in that zero hole right up the middle. That is that power they love to run right down here. Huge block by Jake Kubis, the right guard. Showing another heavy set. Cole Payton will keep. Payton up the middle. And Peyton with a solid run on first down. Give him five yards. You can just feel it, Lowell. You can feel the commitment right now from Tyler Roll in this offense. They're going to establish this run game in the second half. No more playing around. That wasn't us in the first half. We're going to impose our will because that's going to open up all the big plays down the field. And again, that ball is coming right downhill right now. And spotted. Right at the 20. Red zone time for the Bison. Full house backfield. To Williams. Williams stopped by Governor. Well, Governor's starting to show us why he's an all star. Six foot three, 284 pounds. Right over the nose, folks. And if you don't double him, wow. you got problems. Did you see that get off from a big dude like that? Amazing penetration is kryptonite for any run game. His defensive coordinator says you would laugh if you saw him getting off the bus first. <laughs> but then he starts to play. Then it's not funny anymore. Here's Cole Payton at quarterback, third and six. Payton, heavy right side. The Grizz defense is there for the stop. And that is Braxton Hill bringing down Cole Payton. Well, Braxton Hill gets the tackle, but that play was made by number 42, Riley Wilson. Riley Wilson came upfield and set the edge in the backfield. And I love his nickname, Riley Wilson. They call him Hollywood. That was Hollywood. Well, there's nothing fake about that play. He came up and collisioned the offensive player and made the play himself. Griffin Croza from 38. Croza connects, and we have a one-point ball game. This is the theater, the tension, the flair for the dramatic that you would want with a spot in the national championship on the line. The Grizz hold in the red zone. Media Another timeout. field goal for the Bison. All they have to show for their offensive output so far. Laura Galindo here with Tioka Jackson, Don Davenport, and all our friends in Missoula, Montana, where once again, it is a sellout inside Washington Grizzly Stadium. Last time the Bison were here, 2015. That kicked off this season. Montana won on a touchdown in the final seconds of the game. The Bison have continued to roll, stacking national title on top of national title. Montana trying to get to the title game for the first time since 09. Let's check in with Dawn. 
Guys, official attendance, 26,544, a new Montana playoff attendance record. Get this, Montana has 19,000 season ticket holders. Well, once they won last week, 95% of those season ticket holders renewed to be able to get their tickets for today. So you take that, plus students, plus North Dakota State, they only had 3,000 tickets left for the public. When it opened up on Tuesday, there were already 5,000 people in the queue online. This was the toughest ticket to get in town. Well, Tom, we'll call this the fourth attendance record set by the Grizz this season. Three in the regular season and one in the playoffs. There's Eli Gilman. It's been a wake-up call for Gilman, the National Freshman of the Year on the FCS level. It has been tough sledding the past two games, just two rushing yards against the nasty Furman defense, and he has yet to get going here against the Bison. Well, the freshman is learning under fire that it's a different intensity level in the playoffs. Oh, the fake pitch. Nice touch by McDowell, first down. That's craftiness there, Tayoka. And this is what we talked about coming in. He's so dynamic in the quarterback run game. It's really hard to account. And when the tailback run game starts to humming, a lot of the attention goes to the tailbacks, and then he's got room to run. Think about McDowell, what he's brought to this team. The questions that he has answered all season long. His most productive year on the D1 level was last season at Central Arkansas when he went 7 for 13 on the year. He has not been in these situations before, but he is performing brilliantly. The spin, Eli Gilman, he's starting to click and roll. That's a five-yard run on first down, and that, that's good enough for this Grizz offense. Check it with Dawn. Well, Clifton was not happy with how he played and the offense played last week. He said, I have to be better in critical situations, more efficient. It felt he left a lot on the field. But the one thing you can say about Clifton McDowell, he's resilient. And you talked a little bit about that. It's been a journey for him to get here. Three different schools, never had a chance till he got here. He said that journey has helped him to know, though, rainy days don't last. Fascinating to me that Brent Pease, Bobby Houck, saw enough on tape with McDowell to let them believe. Now, it was a quarterback platoon at the start of the year with Sam Bidlack and Clifton McDowell, but after that loss against Northern Arizona, he was the one that emerged, and they have not lost a game with McDowell as a starter. But what I like about him is he doesn't put the ball at risk. As you see Gilman running up inside. They talked about Gilman's second effort. He's a second effort runner. Talk about that freshman, but McDowell, he takes care of the football, so give me a trigger man who believes in Ball security first, and we have a chance to win. Third and three, where the Grizz are three for eight so far today. He's got Gilman out of the backfield. That hole, dried up quick. Keelan White, tippy toe, first down. McDowell showed me something on that play, Law. As you said, he had Gilman on the wheel route. But watch him come off of that and catch White coming across accurate ball white toe tapping on the sidelines doesn't get more beautiful than that white enjoyed the postseason has an incredible catch in the first half of this game had the winning touchdown from that man in overtime last week to beat Furman that was growing right before our eyes folks Gilman with the carry bounces it oh we are thumping pads here in Missoula introduce yourself to Cole Wisniewski He's ready for the challenge. Well, the freshman got the business end of that collision. And it was a beautiful run. Everything was exactly what you want. Watch the jump cut to the outside. Bam! There's the quickness, there's the vision, and then there is a collision. Helmet to helmet, no call there, which is interesting because the runner did lower his head. I like the no call, but boy, that smarts. That is one of the top scholar athletes in all of college football. McDowell tipped and thrown low, incomplete. Interesting to think about what you can do during a bye week in college football. I don't know the best thing you ever did at Penn State during an off week. Wisniewski got married. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that, right? I mean, he is a leader. He's as tough as it gets. We talked about him leading the nation in interceptions. But you saw he can come up and lay smackdowns on ball carriers whenever he gets the opportunity. Third and six. The Grizz in Bison territory. 
McDowell staying up, staying alive. First down, Clifton McDowell. The Bison defense is making a commitment on coverage, and I get it on third and long. You have to. But what that does is that leads running lanes for a quarterback like this. And if you don't have a spy, he will kill you by picking up first downs with his legs. And that is so disheartening, Lowell, for a defense. You do everything right for most of the drive and give up a third down. 6'4", 224, North Dakota State. Heard the scouting report. He's even bigger when you see him in person. Tough to bring down. So is Nick Osmo. Osmo playing, seeing the finish line, the finality of his career here in Missoula. This will be his last home game, trying to go out on top. Fresh legs, fresh legs, and he's running like it. He actually averages more than Gilman, 5.2. Look at the vision and the quickness. That's a great job by these front guys, but you can't have big runs without big blocks. I like it right there. Keelan White comes in and smacks a DB. 10 seconds left until we go to the fourth quarter. McDowell tipped. Dangerous play. As that was Cody Eisman in with the breakup. I like the aggressive call, though, by Brett Pease. Offensive coordinator Brett Pease decided to throw it on a waist down. They call second and short like that, waist downs. Try to catch the defense committed to the line of scrimmage and see if you can sneak off a big play. But that's a, a really good job of batting that ball down. Montana was absolutely steamrolling opponents in their win streak until they caught Furman on a good night on Friday. First time they've been challenged in forever. They've got another battle here. Third and one. Osmo with the short carry. Oh, no. Bison bowing up. It looks like it will be short and it will set up a fourth down. That's the, that thing got stacked up inside really quickly throw up the fours we got a fourth down coming up on the first snap in the fourth quarter right on the other side of the break one of these teams season will come to a close the other team will move on to frisco texas and take on the defending champs from south dakota state in the natty Fifteen minutes to Frisco. Montana leads by one. Here's Don with Coach Houck. One quarter to go for a chance to play in a national title. Coach Houck, fourth and one for your team. What do we expect to see here? Well, we've got some decisions to make here, whether we're going to field goal or not. You know, we'll probably go for it. It's that kind of game. we probably got to go for it. I probably shouldn't have gone for the fourth and two, but I did. So maybe we'll get this one. Thank you, Coach. All right, go Grizz. Montana alum from Big Timber, population 1,650. Grizz football means everything to Coach Houck and these fans here in Missoula. Fourth and one. A little fake by McDowell. He'll throw to the tight end. He's got Schaefer. First down, Grizz. Brent Pease drew up a butte. The onions. It takes some courage to go play action in that situation. One leaking defender can kill this play. I love the acting job at McDowell. And look at the actor throw. Is he faking that he's about to drop the football? No question. Well, he's trying to hide the ball. So he's trying to make it look like he handed it off and the defender can't see it, draw in the defense and throw it. Bergen in the backfield. They swing it out to him. Gets a block from White. Staying alive. And the Bison rally to the football. It's still up. Move the scrum. I'm just telling you, as a football player, don't think that the crowd does not influence your energy. The energy in this place is sky high, and it reverberates through this home team. I'm just telling you, you play harder when the crowd is this loud. That play was all about identifying a guy that needs a touch and getting him one, now, the hero. Excuse me, though, but he's 180 pounds. He's not supposed to move the pile like that, but I'm just telling you, he's on one. Oh, some more triggers. Oh. Ball is out. The Bison pounce on it. Potential dramatic turn of events. No, they are saying Montana football. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the offense. Third down. 
Jake Cava forced it out. Well, Cava is a penetrator. And he leads this team in not only sacks, but TFLs. Watch the penetration from Cava. Up the field and knocks this thing out right now. Way to attack the football with strong hands. Now Cava's on top of it. He doesn't know it. Just turn over, big fella. It's your football. What a great job of hustling in right there. I didn't see, I think there was, I didn't see a jersey number, but someone came in flying in and saved the day for the Grizz. Third and 19 after the 15-yard loss. Maybe the Grizz getting a little too creative. McDowell, he's got room to run, will throw. Right in the end zone, it's knocked away. Great defense there by Marcus Shepard. Well, you talked about it. He had room to run. And I knew, I just knew he was going to take off. But listen, when you got Keelan White, six foot two, 185 pounds, going against Marcus Shepard, 5'10", in a 50-50 ball situation, I understand why you take your shot. Just watch the green grass in front of number 17. He could have run, but as a 50-50 opportunity, I'm going to ride with my guy. But Marcus Shepard says, uh-uh, I'm going to play really good man coverage without getting a foul. 45-yard field goal for Nico Ramos. He missed his goal. last two against Furman. Longer distance shots. This one is going to be short. And that looks a lot like the kicks against Furman. They were a little bit out of his range. They checked up. And so what could have been for Montana? They convert on fourth down with a beautiful play. Cava, however, is able to force the football free from McDowell and force this shot to the end zone. A missed field goal means nothing to show after an excellent drive. After the missed field goal, the Bison take over on offense. Only three field goals to show in the production tonight. Here's Cam Miller. Cam Miller just going to chuck it to Eli Green. It was there. It was there for Eli Green. Overthrown for the second time today. Two overthrows. It could be touchdowns. One in the first half of the opposite end zone. And that one a moment ago. Yeah, that's the fastest player, and he had a step. You got to hit him. You don't get too many of those opportunities. Love the aggressive shot on first down. Football one-on-one -on -one says come back with a run. Here's Williams with the run. But it is Chanacaro with the stop to set up a third down. Yeah, that's just understanding the moment. Defensively, you saw the entire Grizz defense playing the run there. And there was a nice cut by Tamaric Williams. But right there, Johnny on the spot was Canero. Watch the cutback. There it is. Now you need to be filling. Beautiful job of playing inside out by your linebacker, Levi Canero, the captain. Third and 11. Missoula, your thoughts? Here comes the pressure. Miller hit. Incomplete. The Grizz dialing it up at the right time. Tyler Flink in with the pressure. Well, they meant, went man free. So they man across the board with one free safety. Oh, we got a flag down. A flag Russell. has just come out. No. Holding. Intentional grounding. Wow. Offense, number seven. Also down at the spot of the foul. Board down. So that's interesting. I thought he got out of the pocket enough to throw that football the way. The question is, did he get out of the tackle box and then the ball get to the line of scrimmage? Because not only has to, he has to get outside, but he has to get the ball to the original line of scrimmage. Let's see. Boy, it's close, very close to getting outside the tackle box. The ball gets past the line of scrimmage. I think he's good there, but I don't think he was able to get out. Remember, Steindorf had one that was blocked by Isaiah Childs, did not count because of a false start on the Bison. This is a way, end over end, here's Bergen. Bergen, looking to make a play. He's got a chance. Number five, looking for number five. Pancake block, Bergen does it again.
That is the fifth punt return for a touchdown in Junior Bergen's career, adding to a school record that he set last week. Folks, in two games, in the playoffs, with everything on the line, Junior Bergen has three kick returns for scores. Two punts and one kick. I can only imagine with that young man from Billings must be feeling right now. He is on top of the world. Extra point. No good. So it will stay 16 to 9. If there is one individual that is making his stamp on these playoffs, it is that man, Junior Bergen. When you're this dynamic a return man, it inspires your teammates to go hard with blocks. Watch the multiple blocks that springs Bergen, but he does the rest. Touchdown, Montana Grizz. Special teams dominance by Montana in these FCF playoffs. Junior Bergen delivers again. You just have to set the alarm, you know, give him like 30 minutes and he's going to make a play. Reset, come back 30 minutes, he's going to make another one. The young man is unreal. 16 to 9, Grizz lead after the punt return for a touchdown. And give so much credit to this entire return unit for the Montana Grizz. Gonna shine some light on the guys that set it up. But this place can now start sensing the magnitude of the moment. Chance to take down the Bison, a team that knocked out the Grizz from the playoffs a year ago. A team that has won nine of the past 12. FCS titles. Chance to punch a ticket and get a shot against South Dakota State for a national title. 11 22 left. But that missed extra point is huge. It keeps it as a seven point game. Here's Green. Mm. Green is stood up by TJ Rauch. Give Sawyer Racanelli so much credit against Delaware. He had a punt block, and he helped set up this touchdown by Bergen. And when one can block two, you know you're balling. I just told you, when you have the ultimate FCS football showstopper as your punt returner, it infuses you with the energy to go do more than what your talent may say you need to do. You go looking for work because if I work hard, number five is going to pay it off, and that's exactly what happened. Williams with the carry. Williams with five yards on first down. Let's check in with Dawn. Guys, Cam Miller has showed no panic, no emotion really on this sideline. He's been stone-faced until now. Before his offense took the field, he said, we've been in this situation, this same exact one before. Let's do it. Well, I think he's uh, talking about that Montana State come from behind win a couple of weeks ago. Went to overtime against Montana State. Took a block extra point to seal the win. Both these teams have been taken to the brink in overtime games. Montana State for North Dakota State. And it was Furman for Montana last week. And listen, as good as this feels for the Grizz, it's only a seven-point ball game. Oh, yeah. And you highlighted that missed extra point was everything. Be careful if you start doubting the Bison. They've heard all season long that this potentially could be the tell end, the close of a dynasty. But they have responded. Five straight wins after their third loss of the season to South Dakota State. Third and two. False start. And we got flags coming out. They're going to get Mason Miller the left guard. He flinched. And that is going to be number six tonight. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 73. That's the only foul on the play. So first rule 
of winning is you can't beat yourself. That makes nine penalties for 60 yards on this Bison team. And there was the flinch. But you can't go on a road in the mecca of FCS football in Washington Grizzly Stadium and expect to get a win if you're going to beat yourselves and just understand that the Grizz has zero penalty penalties for zero yards. It's like throwing gasoline on a fire with every penalty. It's gotten even louder. Empty for Miller. Miller looking to throw on the run, and that is dropped. Oh, my goodness. Another drop, this time by Joe Stuffel. Wow. Now, Coach Houck is an incredible coach. He's a man with infinite wisdom. But i got to say, I'm not sure I believe him. When he was asked about the advantage at Washington Grizzly Stadium, and he said kind of all shucks, well, I think it's because of the players. <laughs> well, listen, there's something to it. it. You know, there's a lot of stadiums that used to be tough to go get a win, including Chicago and in NFL, Green Bay, not so much anymore. But at the end of the day, these false starts are not on the players. They're, this is on the crowd. Caden Steindorf tread lightly. You got to kick it away to Junior Bergen. Right into the midst of Bergen. This time, the Bison are ready for the immediate stop. Well, they've got the talent. Coach Houck, phenomenal job rebuilding this Montana program. But this fan base is among the best in all of college football. I don't care, FCS, FBS. Think about the expanse of this state. How far these Grizzly fans have to drive to make it here to Missoula. It says something about the power of this program to bring this many people together in this great state. The place sold out in 15 minutes. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, are you serious? 9.25 left. Bison really need a turnover. McDowell content to run. This was designed all the way. He's got it to the 40-yard line. So this is one of these moments for this Bison defense. Can you get a three and out? or the turnover. Remember, this is one of the best teams in college football at creating turnovers. They haven't been able to get that done today, and that's stressed this entire team. And last week, Bergen gave the Grizz a seven-point lead off a punt return in the fourth quarter. They were not able to hold that. Offense got a little conservative. It was not very good on first down. Furman got a chance late, scored, and sent it to overtime. Here's Osmo. Osmo very close to the first down marker. On the far side, it's a yard short. But that's what it's going to be. This Osmo guy's running hard. And I'm just telling you, 26 is punishing the defense every time there's a collision. He's not looking to get down, folks. Watch it. He's running the daylight, but he's looking to deliver blows. And his feet are moving on contact. you got to respect it. And obviously, this is a huge third down for both teams. I don't know if Houck rolls the dice on a fourth right. down here. <laughs> they cannot convert. Osmo will not put that decision in his head coach's hands. First down, Grizz. So again, it's Osmo. There's a defender in the hole. When you draw it up defensively, he's like, okay, you've got that hole, you've got that hole. Watch number 43, Logan Cobb. He's there, but he's running through. So you can draw it up as nice as you want, but if the X's and O's, they just don't add up to the bros and Joes. If my bros and Joes are going to run through tackles, it doesn't matter what your X's and O's say. We know the Bison certainly missing Dylan Hendricks. Standout defensive end. He's been on fire in these playoffs, out with a rib injury. McDowell the toss to Osmo. Oh. Osmo looking for the edge. Instead, he finds with Dorsic the big hit. Kubitz was also there. Watch Julian with Dorsic play off the block. He's not out there standing. He's getting off the block and helping to make a play. And there are bodies flying, folks. This is as hard a hitting game as I've seen all year. You were looking at Evan Schaefer yes, on the block that the Grizz tight end made. That's right. You've never been on the receiving end of one of those, well, right? Well, listen, my memory's not too good, so I'm going <laughs> to agree with you. <laughs> Here's a second and 12 for Clifton McDowell. 
That was the play to get this offense off schedule, though. Let's see if they can capitalize it defensively. McDowell, the screen to Fonts. Fonts to the 50. Brought down by Wisniewski. That was an All-American play by Wisniewski. Because if he doesn't make that tackle, the ball carrier is still running. Wisniewski plays off the play, or off the block, and makes an open field tackle on a runner when the defense needed it. Now you're set up. Right now you're set up defensively for third and long. Can you now get one of those turnovers that you've been getting all year? They've created 27 turnovers defensively. Boy, it should be nice to get one right now. No turnovers for either team here today. Dow, he's so cool in the pocket, but will not be able to elude Jake Cabell. The last five games now into this, number six have been the Jake Cabell show. He has been one of the hottest players in the FCS. Well, his brother Joe is going to be happy about that. He plays on this NDSU team as well, but this is your leading sacker. And that's one of those moments, third and long. Your best players have to step up and make a play, and Cava did exactly that for this defense. Says the team mantra is, we're not done yet. We hear you, Jake Cava, loud and clear. Jaden Price is back to return. Price like Bergen with five punt returns, four touchdowns in his career. But calling for the fair catch, a little conservative there. He had a little room, had a little room. 5.06 left. Bison need to get Media something timeout. going with the offense, and they need to get it going right now. Lines. Welcome back to Missoula. 5.06 to play. We talked to head coach Bobby how the last time Montana was in the national championship game, 2009, but he said this team surprised people and reminds him of the 2008 team. Talk to Hall of Famer Mark Mariani, who was on that team. He said no one expected much of them. They surprised people. It's not a me, me, me team. He said that's exactly how he feels about this team this year. And on the other side, North Dakota State playing with enormous expectations every season, every game. Matt Ince, will this be his last before going to Southern Cal? Could it be shades of 2018 when Chris Kleiman announced he would take the head coaching job at Kansas State? Stayed on with the Bison, led them to a national title. The lineage of coaches here and success has been as good as you could hope for with the transfer of power in college football. From Bull, Kleiman, Ince. Tyler Roll. The offensive coordinator and former running back for the Bison trying to win this game, trying to win the head coaching job. His quarterback, Miller, throwing on the run, breakdown! Nelson was there, busted coverage, and Miller could not connect with Rajah Nelson. You just don't see Cam Miller missing wide open receivers like this. And I know he's on the move, which is not when he's at his best, but still, this is a guy that leads the nation in completion percentage. I promise you, you'll be hard pressed to find anything like what's happening today on his film reel because it just doesn't happen. Wow. Play clock about to wind down. Miller gets the snap off. Great protection. Miller runs out of time. Dragged down by Riley Wilson. His second sack in as many weeks. Cam Miller's a little out of whack right now, Lowell. I mean, that, with that protection, understanding it's only third and five, he could have ran for that first down. And I understand he's trying to make a play. But go ahead and run and take what the defense giving you. Run that ball for a first down. You have the ability to do it. You've done it earlier. Held on that ball way too long. Three forty-five. And counting down. Not quick enough. It's a fake. The Bison convert. How about it, Caden Steindorf? Will there be a flag on the sideline as well? Have not seen one. Some late contact. Bison State in their case. And one does come out. Huge turn of events. 
Caden Steindorf running for his life, running for the first down, converting for the Bison. Personal foul, Lee hit. Defense, number 10. That 15 yard penalty is added to the end of the run. First down. Late hit on TJ Roush. So add 15 more. Gutsy move. Had to have it here. Matt Hitt says, uh uh, I ain't going out like that. If this is going to be my last game, I'm going down swinging to make sure that it may not be my last game. Let's see if we can see this late hit by Roush. It's just a push, oh, yeah. but you don't need it. And you don't need it. He said it. he took two steps out of bounds. What are you doing? from getting the ball back to now giving the Bison the football at the 43-yard line. Oh. TFL, Braxton Hill, Mr. Yellowstone himself. First team all Big Sky, Buck Buchanan Award finalist. They bring him off the edge and he's unblocked. And he had to make a decision. Do I collision the blocker or do I go for the ball? And as you saw, he made the right decision. Here's the pressure. Grizz bringing everybody. Miller is hit. Henderson is open. First down, Bison. Miller time here in Missoula. Outstanding. That's the Cam Miller that I'm used to seeing. You can bring pressure if you want. And you want to play quarterback, you better be a tough guy. He stood in there and took the hit, never saw the completion. One on one, I like my chances with Braylon Henderson getting open. Grizz got burnt on that defensive look multiple times last week against Furman. Miller following the blocks right side. The ball is loose. Oh, boy. Miller never controlled it, waiting for the call, and it's going to be Bison football. Yeah, the crowd misread that signal. <laughs> That's second down, <laughs> folks. Relax. Now, the Bison has to get going now. Let's see if that ball gets, oh, he ran into oh, his own guy. The is a fumble recovered by the offense. Yeah, that's the bottom of Mil at Mason Miller. The ball just hits up against the bottom and comes loose. And you're talking about extremely fortunate to have this ball back. Let's see if the Bison can pay off. Miller looking in zone. Henderson was tripped up in a late flag. That's going to be a P.I. Absolutely. Probably defensive holding to be exact. That's Corbin Walker. And I listen, there are certain times when you're getting beat, you need to go ahead and file to give your defense another chance to play because that had been six all day. Pass interference. Defense. Number eight. Fifteen yard penalty. Automatic. First down. This is shades of last week. Montana holding on to a seven-point lead. Last week it was Furman heading into this same end zone. They found their six-foot-seven tight end for the tying touchdown to force overtime. Watch the grab right there. There it is. And I get it. For the Bison, they don't have their six-seven target. Zach Mathis left after making a catch early in the game. Miller will keep. Hit hard inside the 10. I just think of how they got down here, Laurel. After going the entire game with no penalties, multiple penalties have set up the Bison inside the 10-yard line. They would love to have Zach Mathis, the ultimate red zone threat right now. Under a minute left. Miller in zone, got his man, Eli Green. Unstoppable for the Bison. They ain't done yet, and everyone in this building knows. And as loud as Washington Grizzly Stadium was, it's just that quiet right now. And you talked about Zach Mathis not being here. Well, Eli Green says, well, you got me. Huge extra point by Griffin Croso. Montana missed one earlier. 
That looms large here with 51 seconds left. Crows up for the tie. Low snap. The kick is up and is good. Trip to the national championship game on the line. It does not get better than this. Two Blue Bloods going head to head. 16, 16 with 51 seconds left. Don't go anywhere. It's just starting to get good. You can feel the tension. He cut it with a knife. Matt Ince, will this be his final game before taking off to Southern Cal? Or will he have another three weeks to game plan for South Dakota State in the championship game? Does Junior Bergen have another return up his sleeve? Which would make it four for touchdowns in the past two games. And get the Grizz to the national championship game for the first time since going back to back in 08-09. We got 51 seconds left here in regulation. Bergen will have an opportunity. To the middle of the field, and Bergen upended shy of the 30-yard line. You go back to what could have been missed opportunities. Earlier here in the fourth quarter, Jay Cava makes the play of the game defensively. That forced Montana back. They were able to recover but it knocked him back to a long field goal, which was missed. You also have the missed extra point. That's Montana leaving four points on the field. Wow. And as clean a game as the Grizz have played the entire game almost, it's really gotten out of hand in the last two or three minutes, and that's why we're here 16-16. 44 seconds left, all three timeouts for the Grizz. McDowell, pressure. Going to the sideline, dangerous passes. He was looking for Keelan White. In situations like this, the first play often tells you if the offensive coordinator, Brett Pease and head coach Bobby Hawk are trying to score or run the clock out and go to overtime. It looks to me that they're trying to get something out of these last 38 seconds. Had to go to overtime last week against Furman. Came out with the win. But this is a different beast. These are the bison of North Dakota State. Rifle throw, cut by Aaron Fonts. Quarterbacks throw through windows. The window opened up, and McDowell was perfect with his timing. Nice job of Fonts going up and getting it, understanding he we might get hit. the game clock to 32 seconds. 3-2 on the game clock. It'll start on my signal. Need about another Thank 20 you. yards to get this field goal. I don't get this know. Ball in range. I don't know if you're feeling comfortable with the field goal at all yeah. at this point. Yeah. McDowell taking a shot, going deep. He had Funts incomplete. Well, he had him right up the seam. Let's watch Funts. Just bends in on a skinny post. And that ball is nowhere near catchable. Second and 10. McDowell 15 to 27, 138 through the air. Turnover free football by both teams. Here's the pressure from the interior. McDowell throwing on the run short as he was looking for Racanelli. McDowell did everything right. Got back, felt the pressure, climbed the pocket, extended the play, but just couldn't throw an accurate ball in the most important time of the ball game on the move. I like the fact that he did not try to scramble outside. Gets back, now comes up. Green grass, could have run, but kept his head up looking for receivers. He had one, but it had to be a perfect throw, and obviously it was not that. Third and 10, 20 seconds left. Now you gotta be careful. At this late stage, you got to be careful not to put the ball in harm's way. Would not be shocked if you get a run. Crowd may not like it. McDowell will throw instead. Tight pocket and broken up. Looking for Keelan White. Get the PBU to mark his Shepard. So now you have to punt with 15 seconds left, and the Bison have two timeouts. That ball it had to be perfect. I mean, the zone coverage was so well fitted that it just had to be a perfect throw. 
and McDowell has not been perfect today. Is it Jaden Price time? Jaden Price played a lot of football for this Bison program. How about his 71st career game? He's got five career punt returns for touchdowns of most of program history. And another fair catch. So it'll be to the 25-yard line for the Bison here with nine seconds left. What do you think the approach is here from Coach Roll? Well, with this field position, I, I think you got to let these nine seconds run. Clock operator, please set the game clock to 10 seconds. 10 seconds, please. Thank you. The momentum is on the sidelines with the guys with the green helmet. And so you don't need anything crazy in a crazy kind of game to happen to you right now. You fought your heart out to get yourself in this position. Let's go ahead and see what we can get done in overtime. And that's where we are headed. Overtime here in Missoula, Montana. A trip to Frisco, Texas to play South Dakota State for the national championship is on the line. This is as good as it gets, my yeah, man. You got to love a little free football, right? I mean, I mean, come on now. This is, like you said, as good as it gets in the biggest moments. You're trying to get to a championship, and you need more time to do it because both of these teams are so evenly matched. Who will be the hero this time around? Second overtime game for both of these teams in the playoffs. We'll be back with Overtime from Missoula. Overtime between North Dakota State and Montana. Who will be the hero for these programs in this overtime? Will it be Keelan White on the left for Montana? He had the touchdown in overtime to beat Furman last week. Or will it be the big fella on the right side of your screen, Hunter Pontius, the backup left tackle, in on the extra point in overtime against Montana State, blocked it to secure a win for the Bison. This is where legends are made. Moments. And a lot of these moments, to be honest with you, Loyal, are lo you lose the game rather than win it because you're not on the screws with the execution. In situations like this, you don't have to do more than you've been trained to do. Just execute what you've been executing since August, and you'll be fine. And is this the point in the game where that championship pedigree of North Dakota State truly shines? Does so that impressive. matter in this moment? Of course, because if you were to just check the collective pulse of the men in the white jerseys, I guarantee you it's low. They've been here too many times. They understand what it takes to win. I'm not saying they're going to win, but you just got to feel good if you are a Bison fan that we've been here before and we know how to take advantage of the moment. They lost to South Dakota State on November 4th, 33 to 16. At that point, Matt Ant said he knew something special was about to happen. He saw his team in the locker room and knew the Bison were about to turn it around. Think about all the chatter that this team is hearing. They've heard the talk about this Bison dynasty getting closer to the end. They're not cool with that. Yeah, they know their coach is leaving. They are unranked coming into this playoff. And they have responded the way you want a team to respond. Not with chatter, but with action. One captain for Montana. It's the center, A.J. Forbes. The Bison will bring four out. Let's listen in. Gentlemen, great ball game. All right, overtime rules, very simple. Each team gets one timeout. We'll have one coin flip. Your options are offense, defense, or end of field. You're the visitors, you get to call it, same coin. The SoCon logo is heads. The date is tails. And heads, what do you call, sir? Tails. He calls it tails. We're going to let it hit the ground. And it is head. It's your choice. Montana has won and elected to play defense. Which end of the field would you like to go? All right, you're going to start on offense going this way. So Montana won the toss. They elect to play defense for North Dakota State. They move away from the rowdiest part of this stadium, the north end zone. They started to get the offense going. They almost made it through regulation with no offensive touchdowns until the final drive when Cam Miller hooked up with Eli Green. What's the approach here? First things first, no penalties. 
No pre-snap penalties. No shooting yourselves in the foot. We can't afford it. Second thing, the offensive line. This is where now you can leave a legacy. We need you to dominate the line of scrimmage and give our play caller, Tyler Roll, the option to call whatever he wants. So Cole Payton will take the snap at quarterback at the right side of the formation at receiver is Cam Miller. Hunter Brozio, the fullback to Peyton's right. Peyton will follow Brozio. Peyton to the house. That was quick. Bison striking first in OT. They're saying that's what we do. <laughs> that's right. But look who led him, though. It was the offensive line. That's what we talked about. And you got to give kudos to Tyler Roll not getting cute in this situation. As you said, this is what we do. Stay true to who you are. Now, you tell me what a penetration is. Ooh, there's a hat and a hat, and it's Velcro in the jersey, folks. No one's getting off blocks. Easy touchdown run for Cole Payton. Mason Miller, left guard, huge block there. Extra point is up, yeah, and it is good. good. Montana with the season on the line after that scamper from Cole Payton. And it's another one of these exotic packages where you spread the defense out that lightens the block, uh, box. Excuse me. And if the defender doesn't get off a block, you're going to have room to run. And no one showed up. That's an untouched touchdown run right up the gut. When's the last time you've seen that? Well, Payton is making everybody miss. <laughs> Shedding tackles left and right. That's now seven rushing touchdowns in the past five games. Matt Ince, you can only wonder what's going through his mind right now. Will this be the final moments in his career as a head coach of the Bison, or will he have time to prepare for the national championship game? For Coach Houck, they've been so close. In the semifinals for the first time since 2011, when they lost to Sam Houston State. Time now for McDowell and his rebuttal. McDowell patience but is dragged down by Julian with Darcy. So it's the same play, right? They ran the same play as North Dakota State. The difference was the Bison weren't able to sustain their blocks, right? And NDS, the NDSU defenders were able to get off blocks and make a play. That's the difference. It's okay to get blocked. You got to shed and go get the ball carrier. Montana with nine straight wins. The Bison with six. Who will play the Jack Rabbits in Frisco? Empty backfield. The middle of the field is wide open. Harrison motion. McDowell stepping up under duress. That's Bergen. Bergen sideline. End zone. Junior Bergen. Are they ruling it shy of the end zone? Where are they yes. spotting it? Stepped out of bounds apparently. At the four. Mm. No, they're saying touchdown by Bergen. <laughs> they're fooling with us. Definitely did not go out of bounds. And that is Bergen going to get it. And you know, you know how I like how Bergen turned his shoulder to protect the football. I like that. I know a lot of players like to stick the football out first, but they can get knocked out and be a touchback easy and then lose the game. Huge extra point by Nico Ramos to take us to a second overtime. He's missed one of these earlier in the game. That's why we are here, essentially. Ramos' kick is up. What a response. You got good on good. Cole Payton throws the first haymaker. But Montana ready to counterpunch. And they do so with their best player, the most electric offensive player in college football at this moment, right now, here tonight in Missoula. It's Junior Bergen. And the Grizz are still alive. Who's having fun? Tayoga, you having fun? Yeah, absolutely I am. And I'm not even cold. I'm warm now. <laughs> it's funny how a <laughs> hey, hot game will warm you up. It took you long enough. Well, listen, I didn't have the electric, uh, you know, heated vest that someone down the field has. I ain't mentioned no names. Now we're going to the north end zone for the second overtime. Now after a touchdown, you have to go for the two-point conversion. After a second overtime, it's just back and forth two-point conversions until we come away with the winner. So now the Grizzlies will get the football back. They're going into the rowdiest part of this crowd here inside Washington Grizzly Stadium. They call them 
the north end zone crazies for a reason. Wow, this is as electric as it gets. The stakes could not be higher. Two of the blue bloods in FCS football, the Bison, the best dynasty going right now. Montana has been so good for so long. However, have come up short lately in these situations. It will go to the freshman, Gilman. On the first carry, second overtime. He's young, he is tough. That's the national freshman of the year with five yards. How about the trust, though, in the freshman? They give him the football in the most important moments of the season. You gotta love that. So this is just inside zone, and he's taking it where he can find it, and I like covering up the football. Ball security, young man. That's smart right there. Come on, let's go. Nick Dow has been a cool customer. Gilman powering his way forward, and that's first down yardage. Right up the gut. This is Montana's version of running it right up the middle, but they're doing it with zone blocking. And he's taking it where he sees it, and that was a tremendous block on the backside that opened up that hole. And he was looking for the cutback, but realized, I don't need to cut it back. Gilman again, big hole left side. Freshman, end zone, Grizzlies. Get it back. Second touchdown of this game for Eli Gilman. He was bottled up against Furman last week. He's breaking free here in the second half. Well, I love this freshman back. There's no question about it. His future is bright. But this is about the offensive line, folks. When you can now execute the blocking scheme so that there's no penetration and there's multiple cracks, I promise you Eli Gilman will find them and hit them hard. Late substitution, five on the play clock. And Coach Houck rushes out to the field to call a timeout. Montana is using the final timeout of this overtime period. So this is the second overtime. You have to go for the two-point conversion after a touchdown. Now, Tioka, that's Gilman running to the left side. The left side of this line got destroyed last week against Furman. Yeah, and, and a big part of it was they didn't have Chris Walker in the game at all times. So they've gotten they've gotten healthy on that left side, and they're playing like they want to dominate the football. And in this situation, both teams have to have execution from the offensive line to get anything done. As you get close to this end zone, you got to play offense inside of a phone booth. And that means rock em, sock em, man on man, blood of your nose type football, which both of these teams excel at. Grizz, four or six on fourth downs for two point conversions this season. The running back is Xavier Harris. Who do you trust if you're Brent Pease? Who do you dial up and say, hey, you're going to be the guy to get this two-point conversion for us? He may be wearing number five. Left side of the formation, Junior Bergen. Bergen in motion. And it's going to be a pitch to Junior. He's going to attempt to throw face mask. Flag is out. Oh! oh! Kalen White! Look what I found! Is it a ticket to Frisco? We'll find out. Junior Bergen. Four for four as a passer in his career. The staff told us. The result of the play is the extra point attempt is good. Personal foul face mask is declined by rule. We'll have the second series of this overtime period. Hold on. Back up a second here, Tayoka. This man that's been so electric with three returns for touchdowns of the postseason <laughs> just got face masked, stayed up, and threw a successful two-point conversion. Dropping dimes from your wide receiver. And again, look at the courage because he knows he's going to get hit. Shake that off, stand in there, get hit, deliver the dime, and the concentration from Keelan White. He said he had the best hands on the team. And guess what? The junior from North Vancouver, Canada, I believe it. Crowd got quiet for a little while. They ain't anymore. <laughs> Mr. 
Miller, Peyton to keep, check that, and Peyton, and he gets to top speed quick. I understand why they compared him to Tim Tebow. These are the sorts of plays that Tim Tebow ran with great regularity and great success and helped him get to that Heisman Trophy and the Heisman Finals right after. And I'm not saying he's Tebow, but man, he runs hard. That's a tough tackle at the quarterback position. Oh, they had Tyler Roll, his OC, saying he is our era's Tim Tebow. So they said it. Cam Miller under center. TK Marshall, the tailback. Marshall, first down, left side, trying to get the corner. It's going to be close to the pylon. And it's going to be just shy, spotted at the two-yard line. So this is 32 personnel, and you see the ball usually goes up inside, but look at the ability to bounce to daylight. Don't run the darkness. Take it where the defense gives it to you. Great job of bouncing it outside and nearly scoring a touchdown. Is that the tackle that saves the season for the Grizz? We'll see. Heavy look, two fullbacks and a tailback. Right up the middle, too easy wow. for T.K. Marshall. Not the biggest Montana defense. What North Dakota State really has is they've got size, especially along the front. This is just bully ball. Yeah, there's nothing sexy about what's happening. The offensive lines of both teams are dominating the line of scrimmage when they need them to the most, and that's as good as it gets. All on the line here. Who do you trust now on this squad? Look at the formation. Peyton with a funky formation. It's going to give to Nelson. Nelson looking for room. That's it. Montana. Out of the wild to Frisco. The Grizz will play for it all. by the defense. Montana will play for the national championship for the first time since going to the title game in back-to-back -back years in 08 and 09. Bobby Houck, the Montana alum, has brought his program back to the pinnacle of the sport. Let's toss it down to talk down important Coach Houck. Woo, Coach Houck, what a game. 10 straight win for you guys. You're going back to the national championship game for the first time since 2009. What did this team show the country here tonight? Well, first of all, congrats to North Dakota State. Matt Entz is a great football coach. He's had an unbelievable run there. He's special. He's got a special program. And then I think we do too. I'm so proud of our guys. I mean, it's back-to-back -back overtime games. Our guys just fight. Their guys fight. Knew it was going to be a, a dang battle to the finish, and it was. I tell you what, is there anything Junior Bergen can't do? They're grabbing his face mask and that two-point conversion. What's going through your head, Coach? I'd have to get him rushing the passer next time. <laughs> he's, he's a special kid. Obviously, his teammates work awfully hard for him. I'm glad you got to see this. This Montana is awesome. This is the best place to play college football in the country, and you were here, kid. Yes, I was. What a great atmosphere. What can you say about these fans? Well, we love our people. They love us. It's an unbelievable college football atmosphere, one of the best in the country. Uh, it's a real honor and a privilege for me to have been the head coach here. Coach, Twice. I hear the weather is very nice in Frisco. What do you think? So we're going. We'll find out. Congratulations. Glad you're here. Tell Mark hi. Okay. I will. Lowell? Will he follow Joe Glenn and Don Reed as coaches to win national championships at Montana? Well, there's only one way to find out. January 7th in Frisco, and guess who's waiting? The defending champs from South Dakota State. Just when I think I can't love college football anymore, I stumble into something like this. I am privileged and humble to be a part of it with you, Lowell. Great run by North Dakota State, and Coach Matt Entz, next stop for him, Southern Cal, next stop.
for the Grizz, Frisco, Texas. And oh, by the way, Junior Bergen is a bad man for our entire crew, including Don Davenport, Tioka Jackson, I'm Logan Lindo. Thank you so much for watching.